Welcome to part three of Karmics Fearing Death. Why? Now, if you have not heard part two or part one, you would definitely want to um, go back to it so that you can understand the basis of the channeled information that I am receiving and giving to you. Now, for this uh, third part, I'm getting the following scenario that the karmics who went above and beyond to uh, trade karma with you due to them not wanting to pay off their karmic debt because it was too heavy, well, they're afraid because you have basically overcome every curse that they were not able to overcome. This is why they're actively teaming up with other karmics so that they could put new curses on you, okay? So in your energy field, you might be feeling some new, um, new things that you haven't experienced. Endless time, get still, silent, and quiet, and be able to connect to the basis of all the curses that you had done on you as a child. Now, for most of us, as you know, our childhood memories are full of magic done to make us forget what was actually going on. This is known as illusion magic. So in this moment, just really sit there with it. Find a way, your own unique way to remove the emotions connected from the trauma so that you can See, clearly see the illusion and see what happened and go a bit further and see how different scenarios were set up to make it appear as if you were in a horror movie developing psychosis. Um, R.L. Stein is very uh, beautiful at what he does. Okay. Um... Also, who's the writer who wrote The Fog? Uh, I don't know why I'm thinking Jim Carrey. I know it's not Jim Carrey. But uh, if you can actually engineer a horror movie, a horror book, you'll be able to clearly see that there are a lot of hands at play to make it seem as if a haunting is taking place, okay? <laughs> and there's a lot of consistent narcissistic tactics to create the illusion that you are crazy. And if you show signs in your energetic body field that you're giving into it, this is how they continue to do the crazy making which just happens a lot in horror movies. I'm trying to, I have the picture. Think of your favorite horror movie, okay? And this may not be it, but I'm going to paint along the lines of what's happening. Um, the horror movie I'm thinking about, there was a young lady who was spoiled. She was set up so that she could become reliant on the family so that the family could scapegoat her for all the things they didn't want the neighbors to know about them. So the little girl was made to look like this horrible individual all the while. Um, her father figure was just purposely setting her up to become, you know, the, the energy source for the family. You know, he was setting her up so that it could appear as if she's just spoiled and she forces me to buy her things. She's a whole ass monster. However, the mother was very resentful against the daughter because she felt that her husband was consistently doting more attention on the daughter. And she felt as if the daughter was asking for the attention taking attention away from her and her relationship that she was so devoted to. Not being aware that the husband knew he could not keep that wife if he gave her all the attention 
because the wife's insecurities were so great that if he gave her the attention that she was seeking, she would probably get bored with him and seek outside extramarital um, affairs. So the husband created a rivalry between the uh, daughter and the wife. He made sure he spent a lot of money on the daughter. So it could seem as if, you know, I'm just doing, I'm a provider and I'm a father and I'm a husband and it's very hard to juggle all of these aspects. How can I just be myself? So the wife took it upon herself to uh, basically go along with the husband's planning and plotting, not really aware that he was orchestrating something. Because the husband was starting to lose money and he was not able to maintain the power and authority and uh, influence he had due to his plan to keep the wife close to him by uh, spoiling the child. It was spiraling out of control. So he definitely did everything he could to tip the wife over the edge beyond anything that she could uh, imagine. He spent the last of his fortune on a uh, particular doll that was cursed. However, this particular company that manufactured these dolls, they made a lot of money from these dolls due to the misery that came with individuals who purchased these dolls. Now, if you had got this particular doll and you were, you know, of love and light, it wouldn't have hurt you. But a lot, they targeted these um, highly demonic possessed dolls to uh, low vibrational, well-moneyed families, okay? Because they played on the insecurities. You know, light workers understand insecurities and don't really try to play into this. Dark workers definitely go above and beyond to play into these insecurities. Now, to activate curses of energy swapping through the dolls, the dolls had an incantation that came with it. Now, the children would see it and just be like, oh, my God, <laughs> and read it. However, the mother being a practitioner witch, but a closet witch at that, went along with it, not knowing that the dad was setting this up. Now, if you happen to uh, find this particular story, put it into the comments. That means great minds think alike. We're going to fast forward because you're going to start to see they did everything to make the little girl think she was crazy, that she was a bad human being. The little girl did not realize she had been set up to be the scapegoat of the family. However, when this scapegoat scheme sheen went out of control and their finances were being impacted and they were not able to... Uh, convince the neighbors that it's, it's the little girl anymore because the neighbors and everyone started to see, you're allowing this little girl to do certain things. Now, they used the little girl's brother to definitely implement making the little girl feel like she was a certain way. The, little, the young girl's brother was highly jealous of her because she got what she wanted it seems she got what she wanted, but the little girl really just wanted affection. She wanted unconditional love. But instead of giving the little girl unconditional love, they literally gave her things. Now, they deny the brother things, and he developed poverty consciousness because of it. And this right here contributed to the brother, you know, seeming like he's the cool one. Your brother's, your sister's a brat. So the brother helped keep up this charade. Now, think about in the end, ooh, the hermit just popped out. Ooh, shit. With the four of wands and five of 
swords. Conflict in the home. Ooh, so the karmics are fearing death now because they're getting their energy back and conflict is back in the home. This is where their biggest, biggest source of trauma comes from. And they targeted light workers, more so you, to basically transfer that energy of the, the conflict that is in their family onto you that was targeted to them because their family wanted to use them as a scapegoat. So they targeted you as a scapegoat by having people gang stalk you. So in this moment, the karmics are fearing death because you took back all your energy. You got yourself free. And now they're starting to be the scapegoats again. Having to deal with the same family members that they are not willing to cut karmic ties with. Mm-hmm. Now they're being isolated and made to be, and with that crow again, they're having to deal with their own childhood curses of death that was put on them. So what's happening is that the karmics are fearing death because the very same death that they put on you that you were able to get away from, they don't know how to get away from them. That's why they're teaming up with other karmics to put new curses on you guys, not realizing that all these karmics piling up together is actually bringing soul tribes together, baby. This is sweet. Look at this. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. And what's going to happen is all these karmics are going to get together and take each other out. Let's get a final card. Because the karmics know that if you don't die, they die. So we have the devil, the hanged man, supported by the nine of swords. This is why they are obsessed with stopping you because their greatest fear is about to come true. 